for our opening song that's on full band. Cheers to the love you know who you are. 478, 478, sweet our offer.
Tengende, Jan Tengende. Oh, yes, of course. Brother well, Jan, hello, <laughs> and his son as well, hello. Um, so let's give them a warm welcome as well, and everyone. Uh, for this special feature, it's actually going to be quite, quite simple. We know that this could, you know, uh, things for, I mean, pray to God that possibly um, this is going to be our last Sabbath of restrictions. And so we've been hearing in the news all of this, you know, other things happening, maybe the, the mask will be on, but most of the restrictions will be gone by next week, uh, 19, Monday, isn't it? Oh, Monday, sorry. So Monday, hopefully, most of the restrictions will be gone, and we could say that, you know, it will be back to as normal. Will that mean that there's food? I'm looking yeah. forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> Brother George is keeping count, uh, definitely. Uh, we know we've been waiting for you know the day that we we can we can uh, be more free uh, with our movement and everything, be more be more uh, able to socialize more and, and fellowship more as well as the church. So um, with this special feature, which will be followed by a short promotional tour uh, by our brother Mark Ojemi Samuel. So I, I would like to actually have an audience participation. So I could perhaps go around so that everyone has a chance to, to say something. But tell us what are you what have you been thankful for during the pandemic? Just a, a short testimonial. What have you been thankful for during uh, this time? And also, uh, what are you looking forward to? Uh, you know, moving forward as well. After, after the announcement, hopefully um, on Monday. So, where should I start? Uh, let's start from let's start from the back to the one who just walked in. <laughs> Caught my attention. So, have you? Um, so, if you could share with us, you know, a quick testimony, just so we can catch up as a church, we know what you know what what each other has. Or what we have been thankful for during this time, this whole time. First of all, first of all, I'm thankful that I'm still alive and Amen. that I haven't been sick during the course of this pandemic, and I'm able to fulfill God's mission for nights and nights in rendering the best care to my patients. And yeah, it gives me my life so much purpose, mm -hmm. and I will always be grateful for that. And what I'm looking forward to is, you know, I'm really looking forward to going home. Oh, <laughs> oh, so I've never been to Essence again, I haven't been home yet, so hopefully when the lockdown is lifted, I'm um, going to be able to book my ticket back, back home, and I can probably go home and see my family, maybe next year, but well, yeah, it is what it is, but I am looking forward to that. I mean, everything shall pass, isn't it? I'm just hoping and praying that everything will go back to normal. That's it. Thank you. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, shall we move to uh, Sister Marijo? I'm, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for, well, I would say thank you. This whole 18 months, we were able to just sit back and just enjoy time with ourselves, also with our family. Because in you know 
in the days where it was pre-COVID, we were more involved with uh, work, let's say, you know, working when we come home, we're tired, we go to sleep, wake up another day, go, to back, go back to work. That time with um, quality time with family is scarce sometimes in some households, mm -hmm. um, but we're very lucky in a way where we were able to just get together and really touch base with everyone else's feelings and reconnect really again as a family. So I'm really grateful for that. Okay, amen. Praise God. Absolutely. Maybe. Um, so Angie? Yes, Angie. Angie. Happy Sabbath, everyone. And just very thankful for these guys. Because, you know, I want to be in the accommodation department. It's not the guys. And I just, uh, you know, my, I'm working in a master of student in different countries in this world, from the Netherlands. We are just assigned in that place. And I'm just working also for the professor's office, the accounting office, yeah. and the president office. I'm very proud of this. I'm just working since March. I have no, so I have just worked for two months. Mm. And after that, I'm just working as of day. I'm just very proud of the Some of my students, they're getting positive. And I'm very thankful that I could not even yeah. have my own. I'm very thankful for the guy that every time, every morning when I go to the work, I just pray that hopefully I could not be for that can that kind of sickness COVID. Yes. Because I'm working uh, every day and I don't know because if I'm doing like <laughs> my family in the Philippines, you just only me and the little girl that my every every day I'm just talking to my children. Mama, can you stop working? It's very hard for you because you are you are very far away, Papa. Uh -huh. And that's the way I just get it done for, for the day. Yeah. And it's good so be keeping safe um, during the whole time. And brother John. Definitely. Amazing. That's really important. Amen to that church. So, 
um, improved, uh, you know, uh, spirituality among the members of the family, improved as well their, their relationship with God. So that's always uh, an amazing uh, feeling. Um, okay, um, if, should we move down to uh, Sister Joy? I'd like to hear from everyone because, you know, you know sometimes even when we do the Zoom, um, we're not really able to catch up. So we'd like to know, just before we go back into sort of the normal phase um, and, you know, less restrictions, we'd like to know what everyone's been, been happy about so we can support each other. Um, during the pandemic, I'm really thankful that we, God gave us all our family, you know, in spite of quite a few relatives died for the last 12 months, I think it's like 10, 12 or 13 families, you know, relatives passed away. But our immediate family, uh, we're all Amen. getting healthy, as you can see. And <laughs> I'm, I'm also thankful that because of the COVID, uh, there's loads of people who's not working, so they try to contact the people that I haven't seen or talked to for the last 35, 40 years. I was able to connect with them. And then every, as, um, when every summer, we have, I, I, attend, I, I almost attend three services, one hour, then at 2 o'clock, and one at 8 o'clock in the evening. Because they are like my friends having a service, and it's really good that, um, I see different, because like, when we're younger, we're all like straight under this, but some of us, as of now, we're like this way and that way, but we're still like having a uh, follow God mm -hmm. and believe in God, and it's an eye opening because like, you, you know, like they question all, when you have a service, after the service, they will question whatever the ceremony is all about, and like, Oh yeah, why didn't I ask that question? You know, like it opens your eyes as well about the belief of the Adventist and how to, you know, like to defend what you believe in and why you're believing it. Because like everybody will question about the sermon afterwards and like, oh yeah, why did I ask those questions? Why am I following this and that? And I, uh, you know, like it opened my mind more yes. and more welcoming to new, you know, like I, you know. Whatever people believe, you, you open your eyes and try to think of ways why you believe this way and why they, you know, that right. yeah, we're thankful about that. And as well as God continues us giving us blessing in every way. And I'm really looking forward to going home and see my family. Thank you. Thanks, well, yeah. All right. Amen. And to the other family, Brother Jojo, would you like to speak for us, Mr. Gabby, on behalf of the family? Um, they are from Monday. I think uh, this Sunday did a lot of things. We stayed in the house was very, the whole time of pandemic. Uh, at least we are always home. Oh, yeah. It's uh, first and foremost, at least I do not have a reason to go away. Uh, on the other side, he's saving money, sorry. And, uh, well, the, the, the truth is that uh, um, from the pandemic, or oh, even before the pandemic, I'm off work already and company. Uh, so my two girls with us are uh, having the chance to uh, more consideration to God. And uh, I had so much time to to explain to them what is like and because we are uh, joining in a short uh, short time of our life, and we are hoping for that it turn out. So I'm trying to prepare them to whatever happened to our life today. We're so much sure we got then every difficulty will be nothing. Mm. Compared to the life that is waiting for us, that God had prepared for us. So this is the thing that, that makes us uh, really good impact, that at least 
and they had it in, uh, in their mind that they have to do uh, things for God and not for themselves. Amen. And that's all. Amen. Praise God. Um, I think that, that's actually been happening in, the, in most of our families, especially with younger members as well, because you know, they're able to really have them at home, not going anywhere, and really pay attention to their needs, and also being able to really intimately share um, about the faith, which is is amazing. And I can see it as well in our younger members, so um, that helps us with, in the youth department. So amen for that. I'd like to ask uh, Brother Yes, um, I remember a pastor saying, this pandemic has closed many doors, uh, but God has opened more doors for us. Because um, an elder was asking the pastor, the church is closed, what are we going to do? And this pastor says, well, God opens a lot of churches, and that's each house is now a church. Yes. So uh, we, we take this opportunity uh, because we spend more time with our family to teach our children, to teach them, and be closer to God. And um, I remember when um, when this pastor says about that, you have to take this opportunity, and this is our opportunity. Now we will have freedom, but during those months that we are closed, we should have taken the opportunity to teach our children and our families. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So, 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 for us, um, we're really thankful for our good health. Everyone that has been through this pandemic, we're able to keep in good health, be able to do our work, um, go, go to work. And we're also looking for the opportunity that we opened up, like our friend was saying, some doors are closed about, doors are open as well. Like for me, uh, sometimes I still get asked from the model of the church to do a little bit of things for them. So I'm able to participate there, participate here as well. Mm -hmm. So people are able to participate in different churches because of online services. Mm -hmm. And things that I'm looking forward to, I'm already making plans with my friends to go places. So oh, after the lockdown, and then hopefully next year, like um, Brother Frank was saying, we could go home, hopefully. Yes. And also, amen, praise God. Opportunity during the pandemic. And Brother John. I think we'll take a part of my uh, past year in the sermon. Okay. Yes. Sure, sure, absolutely. I think what I've noticed is, especially in the place where we live, we live in a small village, how caring everybody has become. Mm. They look after each other, they look out for each other, they do each other shopping and everything else. And we need to extend this as Christians. We need to make sure that we also follow that example. We can learn from other people as well as they're learning from us. Yes. But the main thing I think is that Don has had more connection with his brother in Canada than he's had for many, many years. Because of Zoom. Thank God for Zoom. Thank God for Zoom. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes, yes, for sure. Amen. So yes, definitely. It should have been an opportunity for us to show what we know to, to, to reach out to people um, as you know followers of Christ as well and show the kindness that, and love that um, uh, God gives us and God uh, graces us with. Um, yes? But uh, what about this? I was planning to talk, but my ask for permission and my wife said she wanted to talk. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, there we go. Here's the one to talk for you. <laughs> Yeah, we're the family that got stuck twice. Yeah. So I had it first, and my daughter had it. We just had, uh, came up with isolation. But we are so thankful that God, despite of all those things, God preserved us. Amen. And we're still here. We came back alive. Amen. Because it, it, it can get worse, to be honest. But and then, uh, we're so thankful that God is always there for us, despite of all 
what's going on. And he is just like Daniel, he preserved Daniel and his friends. So um, I'm, we're so happy, and we're, what we look forward to when we're out of this pandemic is we can be more stronger as a Christian and as a family as well, and that we will look forward to be in heaven, to be honest. And that we will, be all, we will all be there, we can all see each other despite all what's going on this world. That's all I can say. Amen. Amen. Brother Greg and Elder Gerald, any last words, any sharing? Would you like to share on the journey? Um, good morning, everyone. Good morning. As what I have heard in this pandemic, being an essential worker, and a very quick, you know, we are working outdoor, and we meet. Every residence is we are going to work. So it's really, uh, in my part, it's really uh, difficult to talk to our uh, residents and colleagues. So what I learned that uh, since we are uh, following the, some of the government protocols, so we have to follow it. Uh, in order to be more safe, but the most of it, uh, our faith will more closer to God because He's the one who in control mm -hmm. of everything. And uh, I'm very worried with, with my wife here because our children are far from us, so, yeah. but we are just praying. Yeah, uh, God is so mysterious. Amen. And uh, say for not that uh, a man in uh, is relifting this uh, uh, frustration. Oh, yes, and definitely. All our armor, mask, whatever the government implement. So the only thing that we can protect ourselves is just Go closer to God, closer to our faith. That's the only thing. After these things, this is a restriction we are left with that. Amen. So we are just only relying to that because it's the one who promised. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. So it's lovely to hear um, everyone's thankfulness and thankfulness to God during the pandemic. Definitely, we have a lot to thank thankful for. Some, a lot of people have lost, but there has been some gains, some doors have been closed, but opportunities have been opened as well. So, uh, just in closing, just for a little word of inspiration, we are going to hear from Brother Marco um, to share a, a quick word, um, and then we will follow with the um, special music and then the lesson study. For this, I'm going to take off my mask and I'll speak with an open mouth. Because it's true, um, as Sister Tanya said, about how the government is now um, planning to lift the restrictions. But I would just like to greet each and every one of you all. Happy Sabbath, family of God. It's good to see you. And it's good to be back. I uh, just arrived actually, well, uh, about last week, in um, July 2. I came back from the Philippines with my dad because I just graduated from um, Central Philippine Adventist College. And uh, I'm back here reunited with my family and my sisters. And I uh, praise God for the opportunity that I would just like to share a very important. Uh, promotional talk about uh, the Word of God. Now, the reason why I am um, uh, taking off my mask and I'm speaking by the word, by the, uh, the open mouth, in this, throughout this pandemic, even when I was in the Philippines, 
Um, it, has, it was compulsory that we would wear obviously face masks and face shields to protect ourselves from a virus that, yes, we can't even see with a naked eye. And yet, yes, we have to wear these, these uh, masks and there are restrictions like social distancing to protect ourselves from this virus. But little do we know that, yes, every day we go out of our houses and we wear face masks and we sanitize our hands to protect ourselves from uh, a virus that we cannot even see. And yet, the great controversy tells us that as we, uh, the inspired pen writes that when you peel back the curtain of the great controversy, you will see good and evil angels as well, fighting for the souls of men. We are protecting ourselves from a virus that we cannot even see, and yet we do not even know as well. We take it for granted every day in our lives, we also face an adversary that is going about, walking about like a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. There's an evil force. We are protecting ourselves from this virus, but don't you know that there is also uh, something more dangerous than a virus? There's an evil entity, an evil force that is upon us. And yet, let me share to you a different kind of a different kind of group of virus. Now, a virus is something that would, like in this pandemic, it's something that would go worldwide. It would go from person to person. It's contagious. You can't contain it. But let me share to you a different kind of virus from the book of Acts. Now, this was during the Gospel age. At uh, the height and power of the gospel age, and the disciples of Jesus were proclaiming the message of the risen Savior. And in Acts chapter 3 and 4, you can read this story um, of Peter and John, how they went to Jerusalem, they, they, they went there to, to Solomon's porch in the temple. And you know the story, right? How Peter and uh, John. They healed a lame man. Not by their power alone, not by the man's power, but by the power of Jesus in them, by the life-giving power of Jesus in them. And when, they, when Peter and John healed this lame man, see, this lame man was in the temple, and Peter and John was about to go to the temple, and this lame man was asking for arms. And fixing his eyes on him with Peter, John, Jay, he said, Peter said, look at us. And he gave them his attention, expect to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now Peter and John, through the power of Jesus, raised and uh, was able to heal this lame man. And they were preaching the name of Jesus. But do you know what happened next? Guess what happened? They were essentially restricted by the priesthood of Jerusalem. They, they were placed, restrictions were placed in proclaiming the word. You see, the priests came together in the temple, all the Sadducees and all, all the leaders of the Sanhedrin, and they restricted Peter and John from proclaiming Jesus. Because they, they, asked, they asked them, by what power, or by what authority do you do these things? Now, in, in essence, what we have been experiencing through this pandemic is that Although we, are, we have been locked down, although we have been uh, restricted in some respects, and yet, just like what many of you have been testifying, even in your own homes, the gospel cannot be chained. God's word cannot be restricted. Because not even men, not even the devil can stop us 
from sharing and spreading the good news, from sharing the, the, the power and the gospel of Jesus. And when Peter and John, they were restricted by the Pharisees to not speak in the name of Jesus, do not preach in this name and do not teach people how uh, of Jesus, of, of the risen Jesus, because they were preaching the resurrection. So they, they were commanded, they, they told Peter and John and commanded them not to speak or to teach in the name of Jesus, but Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God you judge. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Church and family of God, as we are awaiting the, the restrictions that are about to be lifted, do not place a restriction upon yourself in spreading the good news of Jesus to others. I'm talking about a new kind of, uh, a different kind of virus today. It's not, a, it's not the virus that, that, you know, the killer virus that the monstrous virus is killing us around now. I'm talking about a different kind of virus. And that is spreading the good news, making the gospel more viral than ever. As the restrictions are, are about to be lifted, let us seek God and let us pray for boldness just like the disciples did in the early days of the church. To spread the gospel of Jesus and to make it viral. Let's overcome all the fears of this virus and let us with, with open mind, with willing heart and mind, to share and to spread the gospel of Jesus and make it viral to others. To share his good name, his name that brings healing and his name that brings power and transforms people's lives. May God bless each and every one of you and have each other. Amen. Amen.
Can you announce youth upstairs? Youth upstairs. I have um, uh, for all the youth to go upstairs for uh, your own this discussions. I think Brother Chante will be with you guys. I think I, 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 we probably might have encountered one, we just don't know. 
but we ask for this our native cold regions with cool summers. What makes these trees interesting is that they have one of the largest root systems in the plant world. The roots spread underground and form a colony that can spread relatively quickly, covering large areas. Individual aspen trees can live up to 150 years, but the larger organism below ground, or the roots, can actually live for thousands of years. Just like an aspen tree and its larger underground root system, the underground system called sin keeps us from finding true rest in Jesus Christ. Here are the important points to remember for this week's lesson. We've got three points. Number one, the first root, or what we call the self-oriented root, which is called selfishness. That's our first root. Now, selfishness is, I think it's in every one of us, is like the root system of us countries. It is a huge, is part of a, a huge underground system called sin. And the selfishness is sort of like the father or mother of all sins because it is common to each one of us and it keeps us away from, from loving God and others as we are called to do so as, as Adventists, as Christians, as fellow believers. So, the question now is, are you suffering from selfishness? If you answer yes, then you are aware. If you don't know the answer, whether you are selfish or whether you are not, here are a few symptoms of selfishness. When, for example, when you are more concerned with your own interests over God's, when you are having difficulty submitting to God's will, and also leads to selfishness, when you don't rejoice when others are being praised, start to get jealous. I guess that's the form of selfishness as well. When you are more concerned with your wants than the needs of others, and many more. If you have one of these things, you've experienced one of these things that I guess you may call yourself in a way from time to time, you have been selfish. Let's go to Luke chapter 12 verses 31 to 21. Um, so Luke 12 chapter, sorry, Luke chapter 12, 13 to 21. I'm going to read that for you. It says, It is the parable of the rich fool. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, someone in the crowd was speaking to Jesus, Teacher, tell me, brother, to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you. And he said to them, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greeds. Life does not consist in abundance of possessions. And he told them this parable, or the parable of the rich fool. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do with all my harvest? I have no place to store my crops. And he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and there I will store my surplus gain grain. And I'll say to myself, You have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you, and who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich towards God. So, 
It's very straightforward, the parable. There was this rich man, he is very rich. He doesn't know where to place his rich man, so he just says, I'm just gonna store up, build some more cards, and just be happy, take life easy, and be married. And God said, like, what if your life is taken away tomorrow, and you are fruitless, you have no one to share your blessings with? That makes your life purposeless, isn't it? Jesus identifies the selfishness as the underlying problem of the conflict between the two brothers in this parable. And he means to teach everyone, all of us here about today, that this is happening. That we grieve one of the seven deadly sins will always be a part of us and it is not good. It is, we should uproot this, we should remove this from our system. In here, Jesus points out that the true peace and joy come from giving and not grasping. You give, you don't grasp. We are truly happy when we make others happy, not when we try to manipulate them to make ourselves happy. Now here is a quick action step to help all of us. Um, you know, maybe after the Sabbath or after this lesson study, or when you have time, take a few minutes to, to write down examples of selfishness in your life and submit them to God in prayer. Tell God to help you with the selfishness, that the selfishness that you are struggling with, or many kinds of selfishness that you are struggling with, and to reveal areas in your life where you have identified, or maybe the unidentified as well, selfishness that still reigns um, in your present living today. So yeah, the first thing that we must remember, our first key point is, Selfishness. Now let's move on to our next key point. Number two, the fame oriented root, which is also called as ambition. Well, being ambitious in itself is, is there's, there's actually nothing wrong with that. We all got ambitions. That's fine. I mean, having good ambition is actually great. That means you're striving, you, you have a goal, you're not being lazy, you, you know, you, you have. You know, big plans for yourself, and, and being ambitious in itself is, is there's nothing wrong with it. It is when we start to esteem or, or to honor something that is um, what do you call that? When we sort of like reach a limit where, where it's too much ambition, too much of our desires taking control of our lives. This is where the problem starts. If your ambition is defined by standards of the world, like ah, uh, everyone has nice cars, I should, you know, have nice cars. Well, it's alright. I mean, my dad, you know, he likes, he loves his cars, and so he's got, you know, cars. You know, that's when you're there, can you help me, you know, fulfill one of my dreams to to, to buy a nice car and. It's quite good, but just make sure that this sort of ambition doesn't impede your relationship with God and with others. Now, if your ambition as well is an intense desire to achieve honor to wealth or fame, then it also is quite dangerous because you will always try to have the biggest paychecks or to be better than your neighbors uh, and to achieve the great, you know, the latest technology, the latest gadgets. And on the other hand, the Bible we, teaches us that we should be ambitious, yeah, yet the, um, we should have like a margin to what our, of what our ambition or our objective is. And this objective, this ambition should also be in accordance or be accepted by Christ and not just by the standards of the world. Ambition was one of the, the roots of restlessness of Jesus' disciples. While Jesus and his disciples were at Capernaum, his disciples had a heated discussion about who among them would be the greatest in the kingdom of Jesus. I mean, it's just human nature, isn't it? We always try to, like, you know, when we're 
close to our boss or to someone highly in us, the most superior than us. You know, our human nature, we tend to like, uh, to call, what's the English term for that? I'm going to say this here. Palatas. We try to. How do you call it? Is it Yeah, we try to. I don't know what the time is. Is it Palatas? Yeah, isn't it? You've got ambitions about to give your best, you know, so that you can gain something. Keep like, well, yeah, maybe be a little bit of that one, like social climber, I think is very close as well. Okay. Yeah, so we tend we tend to be like that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just coming out to well, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, what do they say about that? Um, um, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that when we know someone, we can always put our best foot in and try to like, I have to stand out from everybody else. I want to impress this person. I want to impress my boss. That's what I'm saying. And obviously. Yeah, the disciples were so like this as well to Jesus, isn't it? All like, uh, who will be at the right side of Jesus? You know, we are his core group. Who will be his right side? And I don't blame them. That's just this. That's just like, the fallen condition of man. A year later, as Jesus was having his last supper with them, the issue of who is the greatest was once again the topic of debate among the disciples. So here is another action step for all of us. Let's make again a list of our ambitions and ask ourselves, do this ambition please our God? Do this do our desires or our goals? Do they uh, are they in accordance with God? Will God be happy with them? So yeah, that is the the theme of the group, which is ambition. And let's move on to our third key point, our last, our final point, is the display or the answer to groups, which is very apparent to most of the Christians, which is also the best hypocrisy. Now, the accounts of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John portrays Jesus as a friend to sinners. He offered grace and forgiveness to adulterers, tax collectors, prostitutes, and even murderers, but he demonstrated little tolerance for hypocrites. So what and who is considered a hypocrite? A hypocrite is someone a person who claims to believe something but acts in a manner contrary to that belief and looks down on others when he himself is also flawed. And to Jesus, the religious rulers of his day were guilty, even the Pharisees, they were all guilty as well of hypocrisy. Among the many statements of Jesus about hypocrisy, the passage in Matthew 23, if you read the whole chapter of Matthew 23, you will know be like, Woe unto you who thinks this and that, and you don't practice what you preach. Woe unto you. It's quite long, so I'm just going to summarize. In Matthew 23, is basically Jesus' statements about, about hypocrisy that we should be shameful. Um, the passage in Matthew 23 requires our attention to help us examine ourselves. Jesus says that we are hypocrites if we don't do what we say. He also said that we are hypocrites when we, we make religion harder for others without applying the same standards to ourselves. We are hypocrites 
when we want others to praise our religious piety, just like the religious rulers of this day. You know what, like our religion, this is our religion, you know, we are like the right ones right away, you know, boasting it. But instead we should like lead by some, we should be humble. Um, we are hypocrites when we require honor and recognition that belongs only to God. Now here is the last action step that we should also take. Now go through the main, the four main characteristics of the hypocrite that I just mentioned and try to reflect it into your life if you are doing it or not. Or not. Now let's talk about uprooting the roots of restlessness. Again, we've got the three roots. Number one is what? Selfishness. Number two, jealousy. Yeah, number ambition, jealousy. And number three, hypocrisy. hypocrisy. Now let's talk about uprooting or removing or like removing the roots of this restlessness. Restlessness is, I believe, the last thing that we want in our lives. I'm pretty sure that all of us want to live a peaceful and happy and abundant life. But we have, first and foremost, identify these roots of restlessness. These roots, if we do not deal with them, will produce shoots that grow upward and produce evil fruits. So how do we uproot them from our lives? How do we remove this, this, this rest, you know, this, these three factors that's preventing us from finding true rest in God? Yes, brother. Is it in a loving, compassionate way? 
or does it become in an arrogant way that pushes others away, that makes others think, well, you make me feel like I'm useless, I'm a sinner, I'm lost. You are the only ones who are found. Mm -hmm. Then I guess there's yes. nothing for me to do with you, or you don't want to have anything to do with me. Mm -hmm. And on that note, I end by saying, you know, we have to do the same time.
are being ambitious with a focus on our life and heaven and not on earth. And we do not aim to be paid. And that's all about it for ourselves. So if our lesson is not focusing on ourselves, to be paid famous or rich or uh, in position or in authority, but give our ambition to God to serve others. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joe. I will end this with a prayer. As far as the prayer, and we will the Lord and uh, peace and peace for the Lord's. Thank you for the lessons that he reminding us for the find true peace, peace in the help us Lord to um, overcome this this restlessness and amidst um, our chaotic world and help us to seek you in times of trouble in this holy life and as we move on to our next service may you be with us and um, fill our hearts with your love that we may be able to focus on your word today. This is our and we may pray. On a Sunday afternoon, in a small town near the city of Chattanooga, a group gathers for a purse party. We represent Peace of Thread, which is um, a local initiative, and it's under the umbrella of ANFA, which is Adventist Muslim Friendship Association. We had a purse party, and it was in somebody's home, and so she invited a lot of her friends from the church that they attend, and then we set up and showed them the purses, uh, of course, we have a variety. There's no two purses that are alike. We make sure of that. And so every person that buys is going to have something unique and something that is their own. Inside each and one of the purses, we have a little tag that tells about the refugee that sewed that purse and a little bit about Alpha. And we ask each lady that buys to be able to pray for that refugee. With the purse party wrapping up, Mona helps Darlene put away the remaining purses. Mona, who arrived as a refugee 11 years ago, is both in leadership at Alpha and a designer for Piece of Thread Chattanooga. We sell a lot of things, a lot of purses, and God bless us with all kind of people that came here. So we're looking forward to the, for the next time, next week, next, next week, meeting another, uh, another house. Maybe next month we will be at, at my house. During the summer, Alpha has a summer school for Muslim refugee children, helping them to integrate into America in a godly way. But at the same time, we started sewing classes for the women, and that's where we started with Piece of Thread, so that they're actually learning to sew, learning to sew purses, and now being able to sell them and make some money. It's Monday and the women of Piece of Thread Chattanooga are gathering for the weekly sewing class. The sewing class takes place in various church fellowship halls, though someday they hope to have a more permanent location. Nima starts the day off with a quick testimony. The women talk about their week. Darlene talks about the successes of Sunday afternoon, makes some announcements, and after a short prayer, they begin on a new purse design. Part of the whole experience is not just about learning to sew, of course, but it's getting together and getting acquainted with each other and listening to, you know, what their needs are and what their experiences are and sharing those with us as leaders with them, but also with each other because so many of these ladies didn't know each other before. And so they have sisters that they can call on, you know, to answer questions and to just share the highs and lows of life. Rhonda, who was a nurse in Sudan before coming to the United States as a refugee, will be starting her studies to become a medical assistant later this year. It's helped me to uh, organize my time first, and uh, my boys, they love that too. And I got the machine. They said, oh, mom, we don't have to throw our, our clothes. We can, you can sew to us, and that's, the good things, and I organize my time 
to for sewing and do what teach uh, my team, my kids, uh, clean my house and do whatever I want. And first time I don't like to sew, but now I really enjoy sewing. I used to sew in my country. So when, when I they add me to the Amfa group, so they, they put me as a designer. I came here as a refugee, and now my turn to help a refugee, to help them what they need, what they want, uh, especially the woman. So now they, they have an income every month. So I'm happy when I see them very happy. Well, the, the project's a big blessing to me personally, um, um, starting off because, you know, we're given talents and uh, it's true that I can, you know, make quilts or make costumes or whatever, but it doesn't have the same joy as doing the sewing project with these ladies. You know, they're excited about learning a new skill that gives them something to do in their spare time. And it gives them the opportunity to earn income. And for a couple of these ladies, they've never, never had their own spending money. I love seeing the ladies happy. I love seeing the ladies creating, interacting. We're a, we're a, a community and we share. And you know, this is all for God. Please pray for the relationships being formed through this initiative. Thank you for supporting Mission.
Let's pray. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the blessings you have showered upon us today. Worship, um, may you bless each one of us, uh, continue to open our hearts and our minds to your word, dear Lord, that we may be able to apply each lesson that we've learned today into our lives, integrated into the society of the Lord, and be able to share the gospel as I want it. Um, I pray, dear Lord, for the people who aren't able to make it today. May you also bless them, um, bless the households, dear Lord. Forgive us those who have been committed against you, 